Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. Uh, today I have a very special subject, uh, a kitty cat, and this handsome kitty is a resident or was a resident of the Brooklyn Cat Cafe. Uh, I had snapped his photo uh, chilling out one afternoon a couple of years ago and I'm sure by now he had been adopted. So uh, I made a quick pencil sketch here and uh, my, my purpose is to do an exercise on painting fur because I find that there is a special technique in doing fur. Uh, it involves a lot of detail and um, using uh, fine brushes uh, specialized for that. So uh, I've made this pencil sketch here on a sheet of Strathmore uh, cold press. And first step I will do is use my brush pen. This is a, the Arteza brush pen. And work on the eyes. They're very uh, distinct. Okay, these are, these are the darkest parts of the face and uh, I can just elaborate on this later with uh, my darker washes. So this establishes the darkest parts of the face. And the rest I will use washes of, of uh, I will start with a gray. Okay, this is my preliminary wash. Um, it looks a little messy now because it's just the first coat and it looks nothing like fur, but uh, this is important because it's the under painting. So I can build this up successive layers and I'm sure little by little it will resemble fur. So uh, let me allow this to dry before I apply the second and third layers. So I'll be right back. 
Okay, I'm doing the second layer of wash. And what I'm doing is I'm using a flat brush. And I'm, I'm spreading the bristles out like this. And creating a more fur textures. So I'm going to go like this. Hi, welcome to the next segment of this kitty cat portrait. And uh, I'm applying the second layer of uh, watercolor. Now I, I am switching to a more opaque paint. So I'm using the Caran uh, white, mixing white. And I'm also accenting the highlights with uh, my Uniball white gel pen. Now what I've been doing with my brush, is I look into my box of brushes, and uh, I never throw away brushes, even the old ones. This is one of my older brushes. And as you can see, it's kind of beat up but it's ideal for painting fur because it's all uneven, if you can see. So what I do is I dip this brush in mixing white with a little black to create the gray fur of the kitty. And uh, well, let me show you. So I'm not using a pure white, I'm using a mixing white with a little gray. And mapping out the lighter areas of the fur, let me, sh let me just turn this so I have a better And I do short little strokes. And it's just a matter of laying the short little strokes one on top of the other. Um, simulating the nature of fur and uh, yes it, it is a tricky procedure but I, I do enjoy this procedure because it's repetitious it can be tedious but at the same time it has a calming effect So I'll, here's a close-up. So by doing these short, quick strokes, I'm mimicking the nature of fur. So what I'm going to do, 
this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to do a time lapse to speed things up. I'm going to di divide this portrait into segments like the ears, the left side, the right side, and so on, and work my way clockwise. And so what's going to happen is this wash effect is going to change into more of a, almost like a acrylic or oil painting where you have the lighter paint on top of the darker paint. So it's really the reverse of watercolor. So I'm just going to keep continuing the process. Again, I'm going to turn this on the side so you can see. So it's just making quick strokes. And overlapping the light paint over the dark paint. And then later, maybe I can overlap some of the dark paint over the white, the lighter paint. So it is more convincing as fur. This is a uh, close-up of the left side of the kitty's face. So this was a dark wash in black. And so I'm going to copy this right side and apply uh, opaque gouache with my brush and now this is a close-up if you can see the brush is split up into uh, different parts because it's th this is an old brush and i do save them for this purpose um, so what i'm going to do is Follow the grain of the fur. Go like this. Like fanning out in short, quick, short strokes. So you can see I'm following a grain. There's a direction of the fur that goes like this. Um, so I'm going to do the same here. Now this, this part is much lighter. It has more white, but I'm trying to cover the parts of the mouth that have uh, exposed paper. I'm going to cover all of that. So, uh, yeah, I hope my hand doesn't cover so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm doing quick strokes. 
No, I can always come back and and redo these black dots. But what's important is now I'm laying down the ground. So instead of seeing exposed paper, you see the paint that mimics the texture of fur. This takes a little bit of practice because if you push too hard, you end up making a big blot. And if you don't push hard enough, there won't be any paint on the paper. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around. and do the same on the right side. And um, what I'm noticing with this titanium white gouache, it does have its limitations. It's not, it's not completely opaque. But uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because white gouache can be reactivated when you add water. Uh, I'm hesitant to use acrylic because once acrylic dries, that's it. I can't dissolve it and rework it. So by doing this, I'm creating more of the fur texture with my brush. The whole point of doing this is to make the kitty's face more convincing that it is covered in a soft fur. Again, they're like short, quick, straight strokes following the grain of the fur. So I uh, refer to the photograph. Okay, so now around the eye area of the, the left side is a little lighter or whiter. So again, I'm going to come in and go like this. It just takes a little amount of patience, but once you get the hang of it, the, the rewards are great that you can accomplish what you thought was very difficult to do. It's not that difficult at all once you get the hang of it. Okay, so now I will reinforce this with a white because this area is looks very flat again i'm making sure my brush is split open
Okay, that takes care of the eye area. And I will go over this again. Then when I want to make the hairs a little longer, I just make a stroke and then pull back, make a stroke and then pull back, like so. But usually the fur around the eye area is a little longer. Okay. So that is the principle of painting fur. You have this area here and this area here. And now it's looking more convincing as a furry area, as opposed to this, which still looks very flat. So I'm going to have to work on, on that. This ear, so it's dark here, and then this area here has long white hairs. So I'm just gonna turn this like so. Now the hair on inside and around the ear are much longer. So the long hairs go like this in a curve. Same with the left ear. So now the kitty's nose, this part of the nose has a lot of, of brown on it. So I'm going to mix up some burnt sienna and touch up this area here. Taking a short break. Um, it's fairly repetitious. I just have to vary the direction of the grain 
And since the kitty is a tabby cat, I have to alternate the light and dark stripes. But if you notice, this area is becoming more and more convincing as fur, as compared to this part, which is just a wash. So I've let this dry and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do a very important part of the cat, which is the whiskers. And no cat is complete without these details.
Okay, I think I'm going to call this kitty finished. I know it's, there's always one more thing, one more thing, but it's very hard to very hard to stop when you're doing something so detailed as this. So the uh, white gel pen makes a huge difference. And uh, here I'm going to hold it up so you see the detail. So that is my exercise with painting fur with my uh, kitty cat from the Brooklyn Cat Cafe. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, it's a bit long, but it's quite elaborate. Um, so I hope you uh, liked it. Please share with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. And for those who subscribe, my deepest appreciation. I hope to see you next time.